Is everybody ready for a scary THX story for Labor Day? Ready. 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 Okay, the rules are just like the others, including the scrapped one due to rendering issues. When the text box gets full, another person continues. Angela, dressed in black and gold like a professional rapper, is our sound person. Shall we begin? My god, is this real life, or is this just a never-ending nightmare? Anyways, behold as I tell you the longest THX trailer I have seen. I was at Walmart with my mom shopping. I told her I wanted to go to the DVD area to find some rare DVDs. She said yes. We went to the DVD area. I was walking around until I saw the biggest box to ever exist. It was a THX certified Disney Junior box set. The cover consisted of Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Chip, Dale, Coop, Sweetie, Little Boo, Sophia the First, Kermit, Bluey, Bingo, Vampirina, Henry Hug the Monster, Manny, Eliven, Leo, Quincy, Yubi, Wayne, Jojo, Goliath, Mira, Doc McStuffins, Suki, Tiber, Miles, Jake, Spidey, Ken, Bunga, Eureka, Bingo, Rolly, Pip, Freddy, Oso, Nancy, Elena, Sheriff Collie, Ginny, Goldie, Bear and John in a Disney Junior Hill background. I thought the box set looked really epic. I showed my mom the box set. She asked me how much it cost. I showed her and it was free for a day. Me and mom walked to the cashier to get it. Once we paid for it, we drove home. Once we got home, I took out the following shows, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, Chip, and Dale Nutty Tales, The Chicken Squad, Sophia the First, Muppet Babies, Bluey, Vampirina, Henry Huggle Monster, Handy Manny, Jungle Junction, Little Einstein, Higley Town Heroes, Jojo Circus, Mira Royal Detective, Doc McStuffins, Miles from Tomorrowland, Jake and the Neverland Pirates, Spidey and his amazing friends, The Lion Guard, Eureka, Puppy Dog Pals, TOTS, Special Agent Oso, Fancy Nancy, Elena of Avalor, Sheriff Callie's Wild West, Super Kitties, Goldie and Bear, By Quick Pack and Dino Ranch. I then noticed a secret DVD actor taking out the aforementioned DVDs. It was called the Rare THX Trailer, made by Disney Junior. I took that out and put it into my DVD player. The first thing it began with was the Disney logo, and then it showed a montage of clips from the previously mentioned shows, then it showed the menu. The menu had most of the characters and different colored boxes, including Tex. The options were the same as all the other bots the others have encountered. I pressed play to watch the trailer. But however, it started with a warning. Warning, this trailer was made to promote Renfield albeit not THX certified. Watch at your own risk. Oh no, I said in disbelief. Here we go again. The trailer opened with a shot of the clubhouse at night. The door was locked shut and the windows were closed. Apparently, the scene was in the season 4 animation. Inside, Mickey was having a conversation with his friends, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, Goofy, and Pluto. Okay, guys, there's this evil robot going around the multiverse killing people, Mickey stated. Oh no, Minnie gasped. That's terrible. When I see that big palooka, I'm gonna punch him in the face. Donald yelled, about to throw a temper tantrum. We might need to be careful, Donald. Daisy said, that robot might be way too dangerous. And it's a good thing we called out Tootles just in case of anything happening. Tootles then appeared right next to her. Here's Tootles, he said in an excited tone. Just <laughs> then, <laughs> Is that the robot you were talking about, Mickey? Goofy asked. Pluto barked in fear. Then, a familiar silhouette appeared behind Donald and Goofy. Donald and Goofy looked behind and the figure was Tex the THX mascot. Hey there hot dogs, want some relish? Tex asked. Donald and Goofy screamed as they both jumped back in shock, looking very startled. It's you. Donald yelled. Listen Red Robot, we know what you did to those people. So it's your choice if you wanna keep up this killing spree or leave them alone. Mickey told Tex. Is that so? Tex asked. Well, watch what I can do. Tex vanished without a trace. Everyone became confused. Don't worry, 
As soon as I find that robotic Oliva, I'll teach him a lesson. Donald courageously buried it. Just then, I saw him pale Donald's chest. Donald became very very stunned. It was shown that it was Tex who stabbed Donald in the chest. Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Daisy and Pluto gasped when Tex stabbed him in the chest. Donald, she yelled in horror. Daisy runs into Donald's dead body on the floor. Donald, are you alright? Speak to me. Daisy says to him. Don't worry about me, Toots. But you need to save yourself, Daisy. Goodbye, my love. Donald says his last words to Daisy. Does <laughs> anybody else wants to be tortured by Mr. T? Tex asked evilly. Nobody does that to our friends, Minnie shouted. Yeah, you heard Minnie. Nobody does that to my pal, Donald. Mickey replied to Tex. You killed my friend Donald, so I'm gonna beat you up, Daisy yelled. She then used her purse and proceeded to attack Tex and in the head Daisy tried to hold him still, but Tex managed to dodge every attack. Creating a shockwave. It was so powerful it took both Minnie and Daisy into a portal to hell, the same way he did to Jesse and Bullseye in the Toy Story scene from the Pixar DVD box set that Rohan saw. Minnie and Daisy screamed as they were being knocked out and sucked into the portal. Minnie, Mickey shouted. Goofy, Pluto, and Doodles gasped as the girls finally disappeared into the fiery pit of hell. Tex then closed up the hell portal as he turned around to Pluto. You're next. He said to Pluto. Pluto growled as he was about to charge at Tex, but suddenly he disappeared without a trace. Pluto barked and sniffed everywhere, wondering where Tex is. Toodles, you better go on and get out of here quickly, whispered Mickey. We'll take care of this killing machine. Toodles agreed and managed to escape through the window, which was opened somehow. Pluto continues to look around until he is stabbed in the stomach by that Tex with the same saw that he used on Donald. Pluto called in pain as he began to slowly die from Tex. Pluto. Mickey cried. Gorsh, oh no. Goofy exclaimed. And now, you two are next, Tex said sinisterly. They both run out the door and into the forest as Tex chased after them. Okay, we should be safe here from the evil robot, Mickey said. Did you really think so? Tex's voice said off screen. Mickey took a peek and Tex was standing from a distance. Not to mention, the clubhouse was on fire. Tex sinisterly walked towards Mickey and Goofy, holding a chainsaw. Signora, Tex said. Gosh, I never thought it would end like this. Goofy Glummer said. Right before Tex was about to kill the two, he suddenly stopped. You know what? I'll let you go this time, Tex said. Oh, thank goodness, Mickey said. He and Goofy walked off screen. Psych. I'm still gonna kill you, Tex shouted. He placed a pipe bomb on the ground and Mickey gasped. Well, got a blast. Tex called, as he made a Jimmy Neutron reference. It cut to Mickey and Goofy panicking over the bomb. When the pipe bomb exploded, it cut to black. It then showed a shot of Chip and Dale's treehouse at night. It panned down to show Tex holding an axe. This'll teach those puny brats, Tex said, as he lifted his axe and hacked the tree. This woke Dale up. Huh, what was that? He asked. He tried waking Chip up. Chip. Chip. Chip, wake up. He cried. Yes, yes, what do you want? Chip asked in a terrified tone. I heard a noise out there and it woke me up. Dale explained. Well, let's check it out. Chip suggested. They look out and see that Tex is chopping down their tree. Hey mister. Dale yelled at Texas, leave our tree alone. You heard what he said. Chip said. Hello there, hip squeak. Want to get roasted, literally? Tex asked the squirrels. Oh no, we do not. Chip said. Whatever. Tex said. I'm gonna do it anyway. Tex blew up and burned Chip and Dale with his flame and run. They screamed in agonizing agony as they were getting burned alive. Just then, Tex grabbed out a chainsaw and cut down the tree. Timber. Tex yelled. The tree fell down, and right before it made contact with the ground, the screen cut to black, but the trailer wasn't over yet. It cut to a shot of the chicken squad walking down the block. Um, doesn't ring a bell. 
Sweetie said. Well, I have. Little Boo said nervously. He's been killing almost everyone in the entire universe. Just then, Tex dropped down in front of them. You were saying? Ah, it's him. Little Boo yelled. Hey birdies. I'm in the mood for some chicken dinner. You're not saying you want to cook us, right? Coop asked. Wanna bet? Tex said, making a reference to the Finding Nemo scene from the Pixar trailer. Tex then picked up the trio and put them into a deep fryer. They all began screaming in agony as they were being fried. I don't wanna be fried chicken, Coop. Little Boo shouted. Somebody help us. This robot is frying us, Coop yelled. Tex began laughing as their skin slowly fried. The screen then cut to black. It cut to a shot of the castle grounds from Sophia the first at night. Sophia is seen walking in the dark. Just then, Tex dropped down in front of Sophia, who gasped as she saw him. Hey there, little princess. Tex greeted. You know what time it is? It's 3 a.m., why do you ask? Sophia replied. Yes, but it's also hammer time. Tex yelled as he wielded a hammer. Sophia tried to run away but she tripped on her dress on accident. You know what, I thought of something better than hammer time, Tex said. Yeah. Sophia said, weakly. What is it? Pumpkin bomb time. Tex yelled. Tex threw a pumpkin bomb at Sophia, and right before it made contact with Sophia, the screen cut to black, as I could hear the sound of the bomb exploding. It cut to a shot of the playroom from Muppet Babies. The Muppets and Ms. Nanny were watching the Olympics from the episode of the Great Muppet Sportathon. However, the scribble screen turned off by itself. The Muppets got confused on what happened. Hey, who turned off the scribble screen? Fezzi asked. I don't know. Summer stated. After he asked that, Tex flew right out of the scribble screen. Hello, baby puppets. Tex greeted. Wanna know your ABCs? Aha. So it was you who turned off the scribble screen, Gonzo said to Tex. But how did you? Piggy asked. That doesn't matter, Tex said. Now it's time to use my imagination. Wait, what's he doing? Kermit asked. Animal did not know. Animal reminded. From the power of me and all the other robots, open a portal to banish these tots, Tex said. A portal did not open as the Muppet Babies and Ms. Nanny went through it. They all screamed in shock as they went through and there was a fiery explosion before the portal closed. It cut to a shot of Bluey's house. Bluey was playing keepy uppy with Bingo while their parents are minding their business. Just then, Tex dropped down in front of them. Hello Blue Dog, I thought of a game we could play. Tex said to Bluey. Yeah, what is it? Bluey asked. Bingo! Tex yelled, holding a chainsaw. Just then, Bluey and Bingo's parents appeared and confronted Tex. Hey, you leave them alone. Bandit shouted. If you kill them in any way, you gotta pay. Chili added. Sorry, not gonna happen. Tex said. He threw a pumpkin bomb at Bandit and Chili as they gasped. And you know what I'm gonna do to you too? Tex sinisterly said. What? Bluey and Bingo said nervously. This, Tex said. He clapped his hands and opened a portal to hell similar to the Muppet Babies scene. Bluey and Bingo fell into the portal as they screamed. Tex then threw off <laughs> screaming. It to a shot of Pennsylvania. Bandarina was chilling with her family, when all of a sudden... In the darkness, only their eyes are visible. Hey, what happened to the lights? Bandarina asked. All of a sudden... The lights turned back on, and Tex was there, and he was holding a wooden stake. Hey there, spooky cookies. Tex greeted. What do you want from us? Vampirina's dad berated. I'm on a stake out, Tex said, as he stabbed Vampirina's dad in the heart with the stake. Vampirina's dad screamed in agony as he was doing his cartoon screaming. His dead body fell to the floor. Vampirina's mom gasped at seeing her husband's dead body and got angry. How did you do this my husband? Vampirina's mom yelled at Tex. She was about to punch Tex, but he vanished without a trace. She got confused after the robot disappeared. Just then, Tex appeared behind her and stabbed her in the chest with another wooden stake. Her dead body collapsed. Vampirina confronted Tex after he killed her parents. Look what you've done. You've killed my parents. 
And now I'm an orphan. Are you happy now? Vampirina angrily berated. Don't worry. I can help, Tex said as he held a C4. C4s don't help at all, Vampirina yelled. Tex set the C4 for 10 seconds as he flew off. Vampirina was panicking over the C4. Once it exploded, the screen cut to black. It cut to a shot of Henry Huggle Monster sleeping. When the camera zooms out, it was revealed that he was on a wooden table. Henry woke up. Good morning hey, where am I? Tex appeared. Why, you've fallen into my trap. What trap? Who even are you? What do you want from me? Henry asked nervously. My name is Tex, and I want to kill you because you disrespected my company. You can't just kill people because of that. Also, I didn't even make fun of your company in the first place. Henry stated. Agree to disagree. Tex said. He grabbed a magnifying glass and burned Henry with it. Henry was screaming in agony as if his precious dark gym member was getting tortured. Tex said, and his to death. It then showed Henry's corpse, and his skin was in a shade of dark yellow orange. It cut to a shot of the garage from Handy Manny. Unfortunately, this scene was in the season 3 animation. Alright tools, I have recently heard that a red hat and black moustached robot with a jetpack has gone berserk lately, Manny said. Me too, Pat said. He's been killing tons of innocent people and various characters lately, for fearing all over his company. Even with his own tools that are not like us. Turner replied. Most of time, he kills innocent people with his dangerous chainsaw. Can you at least tell us who he's been killing recently? Dusty asked. From what I could recall, he's killed two toys, two monsters and a little girl, three fish, a family of superheroes, three bugs, two cars, an ogre family, four zoo animals, some forest animals, some kung fu masters, a flock of chickens, a man and his dog, two rats, some starfighters, some prehistoric creatures and a bunch of other people. Manny explained. When they exited the garage, they saw Tex riding a steamroller. Might I add, a fixer and his tools, Tex said. Robot. Robot, Flicker shouted. Tex started up his chainsaw and ran over Manny and his tools, but before the chainsaw made contact with them, the screen cut to black. But the trailer wasn't over yet. It cut to a shot of Jungle Junction at dusk. Zuta was driving towards Eleven and the others to tell them something. Everyone, I have terrible news. Zooter said. What is it, Zooter? Eleven asked. Zooter held up the corpse of Carla with one of her wheels, even though they don't have hands. Everyone gasped at the sight of her corpse. Oh my, who could have done that? Miss Jolly asked. It was none other than me. Tex said, flying in front of the wheelers. Who are you and what have you done to Carla? Eleven asked. Isn't it obvious? I killed her because she disrespected me and my company Tex explained. And you think you're allowed to do that? Zetter berated. You're just making them even more scared. You heard what Zetter said. Elle even said. You're just fighting fire with fire and it just makes more fire. I ain't offended, so you know what that means Tex said. It's time to go treasure hunting with Mr. T. Tex grabbed this flamethrower and burned all the wheelers as they screamed in anguish. It then cut to a shot of the rocket room from Little Einstein's at night. Leo was talking to his friends, Annie, Quincy, June and Rocket. So have you heard about a red hat robot with a black mustache killing people recently? Leo asked. No, I haven't. Annie replied. I sure have. June answered. Well, I have. He's killed a lot of people who fear his company. Quincy stated. What if he is going to kill us next? Annie gasped. Don't worry Annie, he won't find us. June said, trying to reassure Annie. I know June, Leo agreed. He doesn't even know where we live. Rocket jingled in agreement. At that moment, Tex dropped to surprise the team. Hey there, musical kitties Tex greeted. Leo gasped, the little Einsteins gasped, Rocket jingled in shock too. How did you find where we live? Mr. Robot. Leo asked in shock. Tex held up his guitar with some speakers. No time for questions, Leonardo. Tex replied with an evil smile. Time for Sexy Texy to play his own music. WWW what? 
June gasped. Tech started playing Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley, it was so loud, the four kids including Rocket covered their ears and started screaming at the top of their lungs due to how loud the music was. I too had to cover my ears. Just then, his electric guitar created a shockwave to open a portal which resembled hell from South Park, bigger, longer and uncut similar to the Muppet Babies and Bluey scenes. The kids in Rocket into a trip and fell into it, as the screen cut to Higley Town at night. Yubi, Wayne, Twinkle, Kip and Fran were having a conversation. So, have you guys heard about an evil robot recently? L.E.B. asked. Nope, I have never heard about him. Kip said. I sure have. Twinkle stated. He's been killing tons of characters for making fun of him, and he could head for us any second. There's only one catch, Twinkle. Fran marked. He doesn't even know where Higglytown is. Just then, Tex appeared next to them. You were saying. Oh no. He found us. L.E.B. yelled. You're damn right I digged. Tex replied. Nobody's here, which means no other Higglytown hero is gonna save you now. I was shocked that Tex said damn, which they never said in Higglytown heroes before. Oh my goodness gracious, Fran gasped. How could you say that in front of Higgly children? W, why are you here anyway? Wayne shivered. To annihilate you, of course, Tex said, as he grabbed out his flamethrower and burned them all to a crisp. <laughs> but that's not the end. It then cut to the temple from Mira Royal Detective. Mira, Miku and Chiku were on another case. Okay, crew. I call this case, who hijacked the robot, Don. Mira said. Why is it called that? Chiku asked. There's basically an evil robot on the loose killing people. Miku stated. Yes, there is. Tex's voice said, off screen. What was that? Mira asked. Was that the robot? Most likely. Miku said. I hope not. Chiku said. It is. Tex said, teleporting in front of the three detectives. Oh no! Chiki yelled as he and Miku were throwing cheese at him. Get out of our sight, now! Miki yelled. Tex just stood there with a blank expression while he ate some of the cheeses. Nice try, but that didn't work. Tex said. Now it's time to solve my own mystery, who killed the three detectives? Tex sprayed chemicals everywhere as the three <coughs> detectives started coughing up blood, then dying. It cut to a shot of Circus Town from Jojo Circus. Jojo was talking to her friends, Goliath, Crokey, Skibo, Trina and Tater. So have you heard a robot going wild lately? Jojo asked. I have. Skibo answered. He murdered lots of people who fear his company. What if we're next? Tater gasped. Don't worry, he won't come for us. Trina replied. Yeah. He doesn't know where we live, Crokey agreed. At that moment, Tex dropped down in front of Jojo and her friends, startling them. Hey there clown girl and her friends. Tex greeted. How did you find where we live? Jojo gasped. Tex then held up a large speaker. No time for questions, Tex stated. Time for sexy Texie to do the circus act. Wait, what? Trina yelled. Tex then makes the speaker play loud generic circus music as the rest began to cover their ears for 30 seconds before they died from ear damage while Tex survived. After that, Tex then throws the speaker away as he flew off, breaking it in the process. But it was not over yet. It cut to a shot of the toy hospital from Doc McStuffins. Doc and her crew were just checking up toys. There you go. All better, Doc said. Now, who's my next patient? Me, Tex said. But you're not sick. Duck said. Why is that? Tex asked. Because this is a toy hospital, not a robot hospital and you're not sneezing. Stuffy explained. But I am a robot toy, Tex said. Robot toys wouldn't be this big, Lammy said. Gee, sorry but no buts. You and your toys deserve a pumpkin bomb to the face. Tex berated. Teach you a pumpkin bomb to the toys as they screamed in anguish. That'll teach you, Tex said. But it wasn't over quite yet. It cut to a shot of outer space from miles from Tomorrowland. Tex appeared floating past the screen. Looks like the T-Man is going to space. It cut to a shot of the moon. Moments later, Miles and MERC landed on the moon. 
Huh, I don't see that robot anywhere. Miles said. Tex then landed in front of Miles. And who robot could that be? You. Miles yelled. You are the robot I was looking for. You know the real reason why you were looking for me? Tex asked. What? Miles asked. So I can kill you and your robot ostrich. Tex revealed. Wait, what? Miles yelled. Tex grabbed a bucket of water as water floated through the entire outer space. However, the water splashed MERC. As he started to short circuit. MERC? What's wrong all of a sudden? MERC exploded with oil, bolts and nuts, as the explosion sent Miles floating through space. Tex then flew up to Miles. Oh yeah, and one more thing. Tex took off Miles' helmet as his face started to get swollen. His eyes were popping out and his face was turning red. Just then, the screen cut to black, as I could hear the sound of blood splattering, meaning that Miles' head had exploded. But it wasn't over. It cut to a shot of a Jake and the Neverland Pirates scene. Jake, Izzy, Cubby and Scully were sailing the seven seas at night. Land ho, Jake said. Bucky landed near an island. Welcome to Tex Island, one of the guards said. The guards had a more human-looking appearance, alongside with a dark grey coat, brown leather pants, white sneakers and a light grey bandana, holding a flintlock. Tex Island? Cubby questioned. You mean you're talking about that killer robot that kills people for a living? Yes it is, Scully said. Indeed, Tex said, appearing out of the sand. What do you want? Jake nervously asked. I be here to plunder and steal your booty, Tex said. What? Scully gasped. And what I mean by booty is, your life. Tex yelled. Quick, let's get out of here before he kills us. Izzy said. They were about to run back to Bucky, but Tex stabbed Jake, Izzy, Cubby and Scully all in the chest. Their dead bodies fell in the water. But the trailer still was not over yet. It cut to a shot of the web porters from Spidey and Friends at night. Spidey was having a conversation with his friends, Gwen, Miles, Trace E because they were on night duty. So guys, have you heard about a robot going on the loose? Spidey asked. I sure have. Gwen answered. What if we're next? Miles gasped. Don't worry guys, he won't find us because we're on night duty. Spidey said. Just then, they heard evil laughter. Oh no, is that that lock? Gwen asked in fear. At the moment, Tex dropped in front of Spidey and his friends, start telling them. Hello, Spiddies. Tex greeted. Looking for evil to fight. We sure are. Spidey shouted. Prepare for a big knockout, robot, you're all worse than Black Cat. Gwen yelled. Yeah, we're gonna take you down Miles berated. Oh really? Tex stated, as he changed Spider Tex. Then I think it is time to fight a spider with the T-Man tonight. Spidey, Gwen, Miles, Tracy and Tex fought and fought. Spidey, Gwen, Miles and Tracy looked like they were about to beat him. Until Tex opened the portal to hell and cut their webs, causing them to fall as they screamed. I noticed that Gwen Stacy's death music from The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was playing as they fell. But the trailer still wasn't over yet. It cut to a shot of Pride Lands from the Lion Guard at night. Kion, Bunga, Fuli, Ono and Beshti were stargazing. In the process of gazing at the stars, the sound of the same galactic beeping from the tap dancing teddy bear magical event from Teletubbies was heard, similar to the Barney scene from that hit entertainment THX trailer that Dave 1995 alt saw. If it were Dex, I don't think he would ever make that sound in those trailers. While they gazed at the stars, Bunga began to say, Hey, what's that red thing in the stars? Is this a meteor? Bunga, I doubt it would be a meteor, Keon said. Okay, but it appears to be getting closer, so it must be a meteor, Bunga said. Bunga, it's not a meteor, Fule said. It's, what the well, what is it? Beshti asked. It sounds like flying, Keon yelled. Wait a minute. Oh, no, it's a red robot and evil has duplicates. Tex flew down in front of the animals, startling them. Hello, animals. Tex and his evil duplicates greeted, oh darn. I don't know the rest. Darren, 
Take it from here. It cut to a shot of the United Network for the investigation of quite unusual events from Special Agent Oso at night. The scene was in the season 2 animation. Oso, Paw Pilot, Mr. Dose, Dottie and Wealthy were on night duty. Okay guys, tonight we are going to be on night duty for latest special assignment yet. Oso spoke. Why, is it because there's a killer robot on the loose recently? Dottie asked. Yes, and he had killed a rat, two robots, an old man, his wilderness explorer friend, a girl and her pet horse, five emotions, a family of dinosaurs, a musician, two elves, a jazz club, two boys from the ocean and a 13-year-old girl, Wolfie Sadie. Sounds horrible. Mr. Dose gasped. I know, right? Also asked. Hopefully he won't find us. After all, he doesn't even know where we also sentence was interrupted by text dropping down in front of him. I guess I spoke too soon, also said, in shock. Hello Agent Squad. Text greeted. How did you find where we live? Dottie asked. No time for questions, because that is not important right now. Text stated. What's important is me killing you. Time for a special assignment with the T-Man. Wait. What? Paw Pilot gasped. Texter grabbed out his Mukan and tipped it upside down causing Oso, Dottie, Wolfie, Mr. Doze and Paw Pilot to fly into portals that resembled hell. I heard what sounded like flames engulfing and everyone screaming in agony. But the trailer was not over yet. It cut to Plainfield from Fancy Nancy, just then Nancy, Jojo, Claire, Doug and Frank walked into the shot. Shoot! I don't even know the rest of the portion. Andrew Orozco, you take it from there. It then cut to Kitty Dale from Super Kitties at night, just then Jenny, Buddy, Sparks and Bitsy walked into the shot in their superhero outfits. All like Super Kitties, listen up. Jenny spoke. I have heard about a robot that has gone wild this evening. Yeah, he also made evil duplicates as well. Bitsy added. Good sound pawful. Spark said. Well, hopefully he won't find us. After all, he doesn't even know where we, Sparks' sentence was interrupted by text dropping down with this potion and duplicating Ray. Hello, superhero cats. Text greeted, dang. I forgot how the rest goes. Trick shot, pick it up from there. It cut to a shot of Dino Ranch, just then John, Min and Miguel along with their dinosaurs, Blitz, Clover and Chango walked into the shot. Did you guys hear about anything strange recently? John asked. Nope. Min spoke. I did, Miguel stated. It was that robot who killed lots of people, rats. I don't know that either. Matthew, pick up the next scene. It then cut to the THX logo, in a dark background. The Disney Junior logo was seen, but it was badly damaged. The screaming deep note began to play with the screams that belonged to Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Daisy, Donald, the Howl of Pluto, Chip, Dale, Coop, Sweetie, Little Boo, and everyone else that appeared in this trailer. Not only that, but Tootle's body was seen dead on the floor too, his screen was cracked, his mouth was agape, and both of his eyes were turned into X's, due to Tex killing off screen. After that, Tex and his evil duplicates of the Super Kitties dropped down to give their speech. Hello Disney Junior fans. Tex greeted. You will not believe what the team man did this time. This time, I have murdered all of your favorite Disney Junior characters. I also possessed and duplicated these cats as well. That is correct. The evil duplicate of Ginny agreed. If you are ever scared of us, Tex or his company we will go take you down. The evil duplicate of Bitsy added. Good night. The evil duplicates of Buddy and Sparks said. And sweet nightmares, Tex stated too. Tex flew away into the dark sky laughing evilly, while the evil duplicates of the Super Kitties walked off screen as the famous Logan said the audience is listening drop down. Then it faded at black. And as I thought the trailer was over, I was about to reach the remote when one more image shows up that would scare the living daylights out of me. It shows an image of Bridget screaming from the Vampirina episode Ghost Host, where she saw Remy in the box. However, her eyes and mouth are pitch black and hollow with cracks, she has purple bumps in her skin, she was bleeding out ink from her eyes and drooling out blood from her mouth and had a dark green substance all over her hair. 
the background was overlapped with a slow distorted and enormously ear-shattering version of Bingo and Rolly's scream from the Puppy Dog Pals episode The Legend of Old Snapper where they saw a titular turtle, and the Howie scream. That jump scare scared me that day. The scream was so ear-piercing that I covered my ears due to how deafening it was which is massively sounded like someone was in front of me screeching. After the jump scare ended, it took me back to the DVD menu. I uncovered my ears and I noticed blood splatters on my palms. Darn it, I said. The screams from the jump scare got me scared. So, I grabbed the tissue and cleaned the blood out of my ears. Plus, I got a horrible headache after listening to that screaming jump scare. So I went outside to rest my head for 5 minutes. Later, I ejected the DVD and put it onto its case. Soon, I smashed into pieces and threw it into the trash can. Whatever you do, do not get a THX box set. To be continued. I think. Alright, scary THX story 1 complete. Let's do another one tomorrow night, same place, but with different people or guests if they want to participate. Let's toast marshmallows and then turn in for the night. Sounds like a plan, Angela. That concludes the first story, Lost THX Text Trailer, a Disney Junior DVD box set, in Part 1, or Night 1. Stay tuned on Friday of this week for Night 2 or Part 2, where we read Lost THX Text Trailer, a Illumination DVD box set. If you wanna participate, there are slots open for you to join. For all the viewers who watched this video, see you next time.